Thank you. Good oh. morning, everyone. Um, about six months ago, one of our geologists had an idea. What if we could build a reservoir model of the Delaware Basin at the highest resolution possible? And beyond that, what if we could visualize and interact with this model on a web browser? I am a data scientist, and my job is to support him deliver on that vision. For context, For context, uh, the Delaware Basin is uh, roughly the size of the state of Massachusetts. We are looking at an area in the west side of Texas that is about 120 miles on the long axis, 80 miles on the short axis. The thickness of the reservoir, the oil and gas uh, window that we look at, is about 4,000 feet thick. Uh, you're looking at that on that side of the diagram. Um, it's about three times the height of the Empire State Building. Conventional reservoir modeling uh, requires using CPU technology and the models that we build are not normally that large. We look at models that are about 9 million points. In this case, our geologists wanted to build a model that was 90 billion points. This is what we will share with you today and how we partner with Kinetica to deliver on this vision. But before we go into this, I would like to give you some background about Anadarko and what we do and how we partner with Kinetica on this, um, on this venture. Um, Anadarko is one of the world's uh, largest independent oil and gas exploration and production companies. The, back of, the backbone of our production consists of three assets, the Delaware Basin in uh, West Texas, the DJ Basin in Colorado, and the Deepwater Gulf of Mexico. Our production is about 700,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, and uh, our capital expenditure is about 4.8 billion. Our corporate strategy concentrates in three major areas. One, enhancing our success in the Deepwater Gulf of Mexico. How? Helping our geophysicists achieve interpretation of seismic data, as we saw in the previous presentation, faster, more efficiently, and getting to the hydrocarbon reservoirs uh, before our competitors do. Expanding uh, the lower 48 footprint, um, being able to find those sweet spots, find the hydrocarbons, again, before our, our um, competitors do, and um, giving us optionality so that we can switch if market conditions change from one basin to the next. And third, enabling digital operations. Um, the idea is that we need to make sure that we deploy technology at the rig sites and that we support our operations so that we are more efficient, do our work safely, but uh, also faster. With that, um, let me tell you about the team that I belong to. Uh, my team is called the Advanced Analytics and Emerging, and Emerging Technologies Team also called eight. Um, we are a relatively young team. Um, it was uh, formed at the end of 2016. And um, we have data scientists in our team, geoscientists, uh, geologists, and a team that supports us in data, data DevOps um, to help deploy some of the solutions that we build. Our team has grown from about 10 people uh, in 2016. Now we have more than 50 people. And as the team grows, so has our project portfolio and the number of platforms that we're using for developing solutions. In 2017, we focused on getting out to the users and finding out what they needed to our geologists and our um, geoscientists, what solutions they needed to um, make their, their lives easier, uh, perform the work that they were doing faster. And uh, it was more about um, building pilots and proof of concepts. 2018, we engaged with these users and uh, allowed them to uh, start exploring with some of the tools that we built and uh, start playing with some of the results and giving us feedback because maybe we built something on our end as data scientists, but we need that feedback from the end user. Um, this year, we are concentrating on deploying some of the solutions that we have in our backlog to the enterprise. Um, 
So today, I'll tell you, um, before we move back into the reservoir model project, I will give you a background of three projects where we are using GPU technology today and how this is helping us improve our workflows. The oil and gas life cycle from exploration through development to operations uh, requires us to think nimbly about how can we make sure that we can empower our users, make sure that they're doing their work uh, faster, make sure that we get uh, economic outcomes because ultimately that's what we want. Each one of these um, parts of the wealth uh, life cycle coincides with our core strategies. And for each one, we have a project that I will share with you um, on how it is that we are uh, deploying GPU technology and enhancing these workflows. Seismic interpretation, stratigraphic top correlation, and real-time drilling. On seismic interpretation, the goal was to enable our geophysicists to perform their work faster, to concentrate on the areas where we can do interpretation as quickly and as easily. Um, this is an example of what a seismic interpreted image looks like from a, uh, the model that we have built. It's a deep uh, neural network. These work alone by hand. It would take, if not hours, maybe days or weeks for a geophysicist to do. Um, now, using um, we started a year and a half ago with the DGX18 Tesla P100 GPUs um, on premise. Now the model is running. We have two concurrent models running on the Tesla V100 and on the DGX2 with uh, 16 of the Tesla V100 chips. Um, again, the benefits of this is that imagine if you would have to do not just that image, but thousands of images, thousands of seismic attributes on larger sections than what we were looking at before, and pick one, each one of these lines individually by hand. Now we can do this using deep neural networks, and this is helping us uh, get to the bottom of the reservoir faster. Um, the benefit of using GPU technology for this project, again, we went from 20 hours on uh, training and inference about a year and a half ago. Now we can do this in less than 10 hours, thanks to the DGX2 box. We still have challenges because the CNN training time is, CNN um, tr uh, process is still very time intensive and loading the data into the GPU memory, it is still a challenge. However, now that we have the DGX box too, we have been able to overcome some of those, of those challenges. And now we are looking at ways to enhance the network and improve the way that the data is loaded. And uh, in the future, the entire system would be migrated to a Google Cloud Platform. On a stratigraphic top correlation, if you recall the image that we saw at the beginning, when our geologists are analyzing uh, the subsurface, they need to be able to identify areas where the stratigraphy changes, where the geology is different. These are called tops. So imagine that each one of those is a top, each one of those different colors. Um, in the case of the Delaware Basin, we have about 18,000 feet of reservoir that we have to analyze. Even though the oil gas window is only 4,000 feet, our geologists analyze the whole stack. So imagine if you had to pick each one of those individually for hundreds thousands of wells, how long that would take. Um, what we're doing today is that we have a uh, convolutional neural net that learns from tops that have been picked by a geologist. The, these are, this is an example of tops that have been picked. And the CNN can propagate them at scale throughout the basin. Something that would look like that. The uh, data volume for this project varies. It's not as heavy as seismic, uh, but the inference is done on the fly. And um, the framework, as I said, is a CNN in TensorFlow. On this project, our uh, development machine on premise was, again, the DGX1 with the eight Tesla V100 chips. Uh, we are now doing inference for this model on the, on the cloud with uh, the GCP sorry, the V100 chips and the T4 GPUs. Um, similar to the previous project, we are seeing benefits of using GPU technology here. 
we went from training on our initial development machine, the GPU Quadro P6000, which would, took, which would take about a couple of weeks, to then on the DGX1, one and a half or two days, and now with uh, the V100 uh, chips, less than 24 hours to do propagation across the basin. It is still challenging because the data volumes keep growing, and if you would have to pick each one of the formation tops for each one of the wells in this area, this could take a long time. Um, and we rely on the GPU technology to advance so that we can make this uh, faster. There is also a fine balance between how much data we need to have our expert geologists label and how much we need to do uh, inference on. In the short term for this project, we are trying to improve the network as it runs and have a sort of self-tuning mechanism where the network can identify the best hyperparameters as it is continuously running. Uh, in the long term, we're working to move this entire workflow to the cloud as well and leveraging the, T, the continuing leveraging the T4 GPUs for inference. On real-time drilling, um, let me show you some snapshots of what our system looks like. This is a dashboard that tells you when you're drilling, uh, how you're guiding those rigs and how you're dri driving the well in the subsurface. Uh, we get high performance, uh, high resolution KPIs, and we also do 3D trajectories. In a nutshell, a lot of money goes into drilling each one of these wells, as some of you geologists will know. And the more data that we can aggregate, uh, to be able to make better decisions and steer these wells before they go into the wrong uh, area of the subsurface, then the better for us. We are using analytics and deep learning models to process the data and uh, learn from what is being collected. Right now, it's, um, it's an online model that is looking at data segmented by um, windows. I think I have that. Yeah. It's a, it's a sliding window system that is looking at data as it is being collected and performing uh, the predictions on where the rig state may be or if we need to make any corrections to it. Um, the system is not using a lot of data, but it is intensive because it is running 24 seven and it is online all the time. Um, our team tested a um, recurring neural net for this but it didn't really work as well. We stuck with the CNN, that's the current model that we have. And uh, again, we started with a DGX1 box. We moved now to the, and we're doing inference on the on Google Cloud ML engine. Uh, the system is very light for inference because we're using this sliding window approach and it's not massive as the uh, seismic data. And we are able to, to get high, perf um, high resolution KPIs for each one of the uh, rig states that we're analyzing. This helps us correct traje trajectories before something uh, could go wrong. Um, in terms of challenges we still face is that we need to make sure that the inferences are happening fast. We have to be uh, less than 100 milliseconds for each inference. Anything higher than that would cause jams on the system and our engineers would not be able to continue correcting the, the directions as they go. Um, for the next steps on this project, we are um, now going to build a, an offline model looking at all of the historical data for real-time drilling and comparing how the real-time captured data is working and do a divergence detect and find anomalies on the real-time data. In the long term, we are looking at having more complex models and again, more data uh, built into those models. Now that you have an overview of some of the projects that we are using GPU technology for at Anadarko, I want to move back to the reservoir, the seismic, sorry, the, the, the reservoir uh, of the Delaware Basin model. Um, before I do that, uh, I would like to introduce Amit, who is here with us, president and co-founder of Kinetica. Uh, we've partnered to uh, develop a solution that would enable us to interact and visualize with this model using his technology. So let me allow him to give you some time and tell you about Kinetica, and we'll go back to the model later on. Thanks, Ingrid. I'm Amit, uh, president and co-founder of Kinetica, and I just want to take a moment to thank Ingrid and Anadarka for allowing us to work on this project. It was really you know, a great experience, and uh, really we developed a really powerful solution together. 
Um, so really when I, I work with customers a lot and when I do, I really want to get into their data, see and understand their pains and how can we solve them. And uh, when I, I try to take, you know, customers on a journey and uh, I tell them, you know, imagine uh, you could compute anything. And with the power of GPUs, it feels like you can compute and visualize anything. So I said, you know, what would your ideal solution look like? What would, you know, utopia be for you guys? And uh, they said, you know, rather than just uh, looking at and analyzing a few percentage uh, of data set, to be able to analyze and visualize potentially hundreds of billions of objects and running analytics on this. And not only run analytics, but we want to see this in 2D space as well as 3D. And I was like, wow, these guys really have a good imagination. Um, and uh, I may have you know, put us into a jam. I, I don't know if this is possible or not. But I went back to my engineers, and uh, we finally, after a few months, you know, we'll show you what we developed. Um, but now, you know, we have a great working relationship with Anandarka, really solving some hard problems with our engineers, and even gotten up to the radar of their CTO, Sanjay. And he sees us as a critical part uh, across multiple different use cases uh, that Anandarka has, and us solving potentially uh, many of them. So, um, you know, with our technology, we really focus in on ingesting high velocity big data feeds, as well as you know, analyzing the historical data. And really, prior to GPUs, we were not able to do this. And really moving organizations from passive analytics to active analytics. And uh, as uh, Ingrid had mentioned, you know, uh, prior to using GPUs, it was only a small fraction of data, you know, nine million points. 1%, 2% of the total data set. And uh, it was just seeing data at a low fidelity. So being more active uh, with uh, GPUs and our technology, Kinetica, we're enabling organizations like Anandarka to see tens of millions and even hundreds of billions of objects. And this is just not on you know, historical data, but with streaming data coming in. One of our oldest customers is actually USPS, United States Postal Service. And they're one of the largest logistics companies in the world. And uh, when we started with them, actually in uh, 2014, they wanted to see and understand historically how long it took to deliver mail. And this is from you know, the end distribution center to the individual delivery points, where they have over 215 million uh, delivery points. And uh, when we first started with them, you know, it was just ingesting this massive amount of data so they could really calculate what is the optimal route, how long do these individual routes take. And then uh, after we enabled them to do that, you know, we started another project called Predictive Delivery. And this is really ingesting their real-time mobile breadcrumbs coming in every one second from over 215,000 mobile carriers. And we can, now USPS with us can see within an eight minute window, predict when mail will be delivered. So it's not only just you know, looking at and operating on historical data, but with streaming data coming in and being more active with data. So similarly, you know, we see the same kind of journey uh, with Anandarko and other oil and gas companies. This is a bit of a glimpse of uh, what we're able to do with our technology and their use cases, but be able to show you know, billions, hundreds of billions of data records, and in the future, take event data coming from drilling and, and incorporate that into getting maximum ROI. Um, so uh, Kinetica is an active analytics platform where we're enabling organizations to take, as I mentioned, their uh, historical plus streaming data, the entire data corpus, and leveraging GPUs and thousands of cores in a distributed manner to you know, run analytics and even visualize it. And at the heart of our uh, technology is a database that's GPU accelerated. We've taken traditional database operations and you know, vectorized them and in return we're getting you know, 100x, 1000x performance on a fraction of the hardware. 
And uh, we have many, I, I would say 30 to 35% of our customers are in the cloud on all the major cloud vendors. And our larger customers, uh, you know, that are analyzing tens, uh, maybe even hundreds of terabytes are on premise. Uh, we, for the past two, three years, we've really focused in our enterprise readiness. Uh, so, you know, five nines highly available, uh, disaster recovery and resource management. I, I had mentioned USPS. We have over 15,000 simultaneous users hitting us every day while we're ingesting 215,000 breadcrumbs every one second. And we've been live since November 20, uh, 2014 and haven't gone down a second yet. Uh, we started back in uh, 2009 with the military as a geospatial and temporal computational engine and really, you know, ingesting anything that moved. Uh, and we were getting data from countries globally to find, you know, help make our nation safer. So really focused in on location analytics uh, and t uh, temporal, um, geospatial and temporal, you know, types of data feeds. And then through the years, we really grew to a distributed database. And as the GPU is the prime compute device for machine learning, you know, we, we try not to move the data. Uh, we're, we're running analytics right within our data, database through SQL and a number of other languages. Um, but additionally, you know, organizations don't need to move their data to a separate machine learning cluster to run ML models on it. You can run that right from the database and it's fully distributed and our technology just handles all the data cache management, the movement, uh, you know, thread management, so your developers don't have to code in CUDA or any, you know, very comp code to the GPU. They have simple APIs. Uh, we have RESTful endpoints with a number of different language bindings to include Java, JavaScript, Python, and um, SQL. So you're, you know, imagine your DBAs can start running machine learning models on, on data tables with billions and billions of rows and get back results in seconds. So in your ecosystem, you know, um, we really focus, as I mentioned, on high velocity data feeds and ingesting them and simultaneously running analytics and even visualizing it. So we're not trying to move, you know, tens of millions, tens of billions, or even, you know, hundreds of billions of objects, serializing it to different tiers of that architecture stack. We're trying to do this all within our platform and ingesting data from a variety of different data sources to include edge devices, uh, you know, as I mentioned, mobile devices, network routers, other enterprise systems and operational databases. Many times we're a systems to systems, uh, you know, enabler uh, and enabling uh, running analytics on big data sets. And uh, we have technology-wise, you know, you may be using Kafka or stream sets or NiFi. We have connectors for all these on GitHub. And uh, most or many organizations have HDFS and Hadoop, a, a data lake, you know, where you may have petabytes of data. Many times we're a fast layer on top of this data lake and in enabling organizations to look at this data in a relational paradigm and, and running analytics at scale. At the heart of us, as I mentioned, we're a GPU accelerated database and we're enabling all these various types of capabilities. Um, and then lastly, you know, GPUs are the prime compute device for rendering video games. We're using these same video cards to render pictures and even videos uh, through our visualization pipeline that's distributed. And as you'll see in our demonstration, uh, we'll be rendering 2D and 3D models uh, and you can see them on a web browser. And then one other thing is we have, we really are embracing, you know, SQL. And uh, we have an ODBC, JDBC driver. So you can run, you know, your, your BI technologies like Tableau, Power BI, Click can all seamlessly use us as we look just like a relational database. Um, here's another slide that's double clicking on our, our database capability. You know, we're many times deployed on commodity hardware with GPUs, uh, as I mentioned, on-premise or in the cloud, where your average node may have like a half a terabyte of system memory to a terabyte with two to four GPUs per server. And you just cluster, you know, cluster these together 
and you can have tens of servers, hundreds of servers, or just one or two, and get amazing results. Um, um, we, we're a SQL 92 compliant database, close to 99 compliant, so you can do primary key, foreign key, joins, uh, and relationships there. Um, you know, we shard the data across uh, uh, many different, uh, the, the cluster that we're deployed on. You can do full text search. Uh, as uh, Time series data is a very crucial part of us. So, you know, if you have event data, we actually have a, a object type called track, which is essentially a time series element with or without a location with several different GPU accelerated functions for these. In 7.0, we actually just released uh, you know, many different capabilities in that. One is graph analytics. So you can have you know, a, a relational data table with billions of rows and just eight, 10 lines of graph grammar, you can create a full graph out of it with RDF-like structure. Um, big specialization in location analytics, over 80 geospatial functions with uh, just dedicated to geospatial uh, filters and uh, running various different mathematical functions. Uh, we just look, uh, look very similar to post-GIS uh, or ST geometry. Um, so, and then also new in our 7.0 release is tiered storage. So with tiered storage, previously, we were just a database that was in memory, you know, really on putting data into VRAM and the cluster-wide uh, system memory. Now with 7.0, we tier out to local storage and even to HDFS. So now we can operate on hundreds of terabytes and even petabytes of data. So organizations may have, you know, teradata or exadata, which are, you know, 500 terabytes a petabyte, and organizations are starting to put this data in HDFS, but they lose that relational paradigm. They lose doing joins, primary key, foreign key relationships. And so we are a true relational database that really can have organizations operate on these data sets. And uh, additionally, with tiered storage, you could have predicates, uh, which really you can say, you know, now minus 30 days, I want this to be in VRAM have extreme access with the GPUs, now minus three months, put this in system memory, you'll get results in under a second. Uh, with local storage, you, you, know, you may want to put a few years, and then HDF is more your historical data. Um, we started as a geospatial and temporal computational engine, so I mentioned we've replicated many of the most uh, heavily used geospatial functions and made them all GPU accelerated and are getting 1,000x, 5,000x faster performance that you, than you would get with an ESRI or Oracle Spatial or PostGIS. And uh, we're rendering pictures and videos, as I mentioned, and they're all OGC compliant, Open Geospatial Consortium uh, compliant web services. So we can render, you know, WMS, uh, we have a, a built-in geospatial ser uh, server that pushes out WMS, or keyhole markup language. And uh, with the help of Anandarko, we really focused in on uh, generating 3D tiles now. So previously, we could only generate 2D data. Now with our 7.0 release, we are pushing out 3D tiles uh, through a web service. So it's essentially a GLTF uh, data file that's pushed out and many you know, several different uh, GIS clients can understand this very easily. Um, so uh, just to finish off, you know, we have a head, you know, we put a lot of work in developing a solution for the oil and gas industry, uh, and we'll show you in our demo, but many, we're pushed out in many other verticals, uh, really focused in on streaming high velocity data feeds. And you see this in the banking, uh, vertical with you know streaming asset data and calculating risk on the fly. Uh, you see this in the telco industry and having event data and doing site planning uh, from mobile devices and you know also customer uh, 360 in the retail space uh, and you know having you know catered marketing campaigns uh, that is processing th this data very quickly. So that's a little bit about Kinetica and I'm going to hand it back to. Ingrid here. Thanks, Amit. Um, 
So now that you have an overview of Kinetica and um, the technology, I can tell you two reasons why we chose them for supporting us on this reservoir model project. One, location intelligence, we needed that. And second, it's a GPU accelerated database. And we needed a database to harness this volume. Um, when our geologists build reservoir models, normally they look, um, the conventional way of building it is a two-stage uh, strategy. First, building a coarse resolution model at the basin scale, which could be the Delaware Basin, as we said before, and then building a smaller models at a smaller areas uh, within that zone of interest. But this has challenges and issues. Uh, one, it is very time consuming for our geologists to be building these models at different scales. Um, second, there is incompatibility between the models because once you section the data or partition the data for one model to the next area, then they're no longer uh, congruent. And last, our team is building new tools and generating uh, data as we go faster and we need to make sure that we include all of this data in the relevant decision making on where it is that we want to drill, where do we want to place the wells. And these workflows are now requiring us to bring as much data as possible into consideration and having a platform where we can do something with the data. Um, so with that, the approach that we took for building the model was one, build the model uh, at the largest scale possible, but then push it into Kinetica. So we built it at a 90 billion point uh, set, uh, 4,000 slicers, so slices or layers of this model, each one with its own geologic uh, complexity and um, covering the spatial, the spatial area that we uh, discussed before. Ahmed uh, explained earlier about how we inject, well, the, the, the technology that Kinetica offers and you guys inject yeah. the data into. So, uh, you know, we worked on various different parts of this project and one big part was data ingestion. And, you know, this is tens of terabytes. I mean, each basin is, you know, 50 billion, 90 billion objects. So uh, a part of Kinetica is called KIO, which essentially is taking Spark and we can ingest it at a very high velocity in a distributed manner, uh, large you know, data sets, whether they're file-based or from other systems. So uh, we you know, inhaled essentially the six terabyte uh, data set within just a few minutes uh, through a distributed uh, you know, framework within KIO. Right. So uh, really, and then on the visualization side, we partnered up with Airbnb and uh, you know they created this visualization framework called Apache Superset, and essentially we're leveraging this to provide a session um, management and see visualization at scale. And uh, it's basically a widget-based framework uh, where you can you know see various different uh, data sets, slice and dice through various different charts. Uh, we've given a uh, dedicated uh, a, a map to it in the 2D space. And then um, in the 3D space, we've added another widget that's based on cesium. Uh, Cesium.js, it's the HTML5 uh, JavaScript map. Um, you know, it's OGC compliant, uh, but with this, we can uh, render 2D and 3D models. Uh, that's all through JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, this is what the model looks like. Oh, this oh. is... Uh, I think we're going to go to the demo. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so we're going to show a, a brief demo uh, just to set the context. You know, this is a two-node cluster we have uh, on our dev machines. Each machine has around 800 gigs of system memory. We're we're using around 300 gigs. Uh, we have four Tesla V100s in each one of these uh, servers. Uh, and you see this is around 17 billion rows. Uh, if you can see my mouse right there, so I'm gonna click this off. So we're using around 40% uh, of the servers here. Um, so this is gonna chug through. So we're gonna get into the data. And essentially, you know, we look like a relational data model. Uh, we have hierarchical tables, 16 billion rows plus in this a uh, table called uh, point 3D scan test. And you see now semantically we can hold 2D and 3D data. And you saw X, Y, Z mm -hmm. 
porosity is a major attribute that we'll be visualizing on this map here. Uh, so this is reveal. Uh, you're seeing, you know, as the user clicks on, you're scrolling um, layer by layer mm -hmm. subsurface. Right. So some of the functions that we asked the team to build for us was the ability to pan through each one of these 4,000 layers of the model seamlessly without delay. They demonstrated that for us. Uh, the next thing that you will see is uh, calculating uh, derivative, uh, um, I guess, uh, data sets from the data. So you will see, now we're, well, now we're looking at uh, how the data resolution has not changed. When you're looking at it from a far distance, you can click on a point and identify that attribute. Yeah, not throwing any data away. And you, have, you, know, you can get info at any time through the entire data corpus. And uh, here we will see um, filtering on a spatial uh, extent. So now we will create a bounding box, create a filter, filter the layers, not just on X, Y, but also on Z. We will select a couple layers and perform a calculation on the fly. So this is a ST intersection function. If you guys are GIS guys, you know, all running through SQL. So all the communication to and from our databases, all through our ODBC, JDBC driver from reveal, sending SQL and WMS services back and forth uh, mm -hmm. from our analytics platform, Kinetica. And here we've created an average porosity of the 10 layers that were stacked on that model and switched to 3D view. So now this is cesium and uh, this is, you know, a GLTF, uh, well, this is 3D tiles and this is a uh, all on a web browser, all HTML5, and you can slice and dice from, you know, uh, the X, Y axis, the X, Z axis, all the three planes here, and it's totally interactive. Mm -hmm. One key aspect is that we needed to maintain the high resolution of the model on any of these views, uh, and the team demonstrated that. They were able to zoom in into that area, and we can still see that fine granularity of that porosity model. So the user just clicked on a purple area, you know, it was a porosity of 0.16, uh, clicked on a brown area, it hit Kinetica, and now 0 0.06. So fully interactive, you can engage anywhere in the data model and, and get the results. And then we moved, you know, from the slice plane to right. the full model here. Mm -hmm. Correct, and this is something that uh, any geophysicist or any geologist that is examining a reservoir model will want to do. They always want to pan through in different directions and be able to see the volume as it changes. So now this widget has, uh, we've been working with Anadarka, and now it's been incorporated into the reveal uh, framework, but mm -hmm. this is all, you know, it's gonna be, all the filters are gonna be aligned with the 2D and 3D space here. And one of the things that we are working on right now is incorporating at our well data. Each one of those wells that you saw on the map before, the well logs, that's what we're doing here. We're testing with just a small handful of wells, but the idea is that we have over 18,000 wells or, or a magnitude of 18,000, 20,000 wells in the Delaware Basin that we need to be able to render and display um, and co-render with the model. So that we're working on that right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, fully interactive, as I mentioned. Uh, they clicked on, you know, a pinkish area, more porous, 0.11 there, higher probability of finding oil or gas, or? We won't go into those details <laughs> because there's geologists in the room, and I'm sure that they'll have some different opinion, but uh, the idea is that we want to keep every attribute. And right now, we only have one attribute on this model, just porosity. Um, our timeline is now getting into more attributes and getting more um, models of different basins that we are exploring. I'll need to skip a couple slides. Yeah. Um, okay. that one. To close off, um, as you saw, we are using GPU technology in a number of different areas at Anadarko to power our digital transformation, support uh, our goal of deriving economic outcomes. GPU technology is helping us do that. Um, now that we're using cloud and GPU technology, we can get, uh, make decisions on those basins with more accuracy and faster, and that's really what we're after. Um, and our partnership with Kinetica has enabled us to 
be able to think of reservoir modeling in a new way. This is not something that our geologists would normally do is building a model at a large scale, but now that we have a way to do it, why not? Uh, so that's what we're um, here to share with you today. And uh, before we go off, we want to invite you to come and see us at the poster session. We have a poster with more details and we can answer more specific questions or hang out with us at the Connecticut booth. We'll be there as well. Yep. And uh, uh, lastly, to thank the Kinetica and the Anadarko teams that have been working on several of these projects and helping us with the reservoir model. Yeah, we have a great partnership, so I wanted to thank Ingrid and the Anadarko team. It's been a you know, fabulous uh, relationship, and we hope to work with you guys for many years to come. So thank you. Thank you.